All right. I believe we are live. Hi, everybody. I am Walter. Nice to see you. If you are new to the channel, this is Where's Walter TV. And we are all about, oh, just all things cruising, really. That, that's how we started out. You know, uh, we get a lot of questions about cruising because our friends know that we go cruising a lot. And there's so much bad information out there. There is so much misinformation out there. It's absolutely terrible. So we decided to start Where's Walter TV just to make sure that you guys get the most accurate information possible to, uh, you know, to get to get all the right information for cruising and travel and everything else. Checking my settings right now. This is our first time using StreamYard uh, live for an hour, and this is our first time really going for an hour on this thing. So if you've joined us on TikTok, we've been doing TikTok lives for, I don't know, three months now, maybe four months. And now we decided to start branching out, coming over to YouTube and uh, join you guys over here. We're growing our YouTube channel a little bit slowly, but surely. Hopefully you've been uh, enjoying our uh, our vlogs. I know the uh, Mardi Gras food vlog, man, that is up to, I don't know, almost 17,000 views, which for me, that's really good. I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> So we are in the Orlando area. Hey, there is Chase the Cruiser. There is Tristan. How are you guys? Good to see you. Thanks for joining us over here. Look, I, I can I can put my arms out. I'm not in a vertical space anymore. I actually have room to move around. This is kind of weird. This is kind of weird. But Where's Walter TV is all about, you know, helping you guys and, and getting good, accurate information to you. There's a lot of really bad information about cruising out there and what the cruising experience is all about. And, and we're just, and look, cruising is not for everybody. It really isn't. But we want to give you the best information so you can make an informed decision as to whether cruising is for you. And some of the other things we talk about on here is just general travel. And because we do live in the Orlando area, we love talking about the theme parks as well. So, oh, Tristan, you're saying you prefer YouTube to the TikTok. Good to know. Good to know. And, you know, by the way, uh, we're going to be trying some different times, you know, uh, they tell you to look at the analytics in YouTube and see where your audience is and when your audience is. And Saturday at 5 p.m. actually was one of those times where it said, there's a lot of your audience on there. So we're going to try this out today, but we might move the times around a little bit until we figure out a good time for everybody. So, so the first question that I've got up for everybody, uh, if you are new to cruising and you're thinking about taking a cruise, just kind of think, think about this in the back of your mind. If you've got questions out there, if you've got concerns out there, uh, you're thinking about your first cruise, you're not sure, is cruising right for me? Is it scary? Is it going to be what I want it to be? Am I going to be claustrophobic? Am I going to like the food? You know, whatever question that, that you might have in regard to maybe taking your first cruise, just put them out there in the comments. We'll be happy to help out. And as usual, Oh, yeah. And Rebecca saying, or if it's your first cruise post pandemic, if you haven't taken one, we've taken three uh, since the uh, pandemic has closed out. And we've kind of had almost three different situations going on the cruise. We've been on Norwegian Cruise Line. We've been on Carnival and we went on the Scarlet Lady over at Virgin Voyages. So amazing. Chase, you're saying that the video quality looks good. That's awesome, because actually I am in the free version of StreamYard, which you can tell because the logo is right there. A little logos right there. We're using the free version and it only allows me to use 720p. So I can't use 1080p until we start paying for it, which we will do soon. You know, you got to try out the software before you buy it, right? So we're, we're trying it out, seeing if we like it and all of that good stuff. So um, the big question of the day that I'm throwing out there for everybody is, I talked about it on my TikTok just a little while ago, but do we think the cruise lines are moving a little bit too fast? Are they opening up everything a little bit too fast. You know, we've had an outstanding, outstanding return to cruising. I mean, the cruise lines have done an amazing job. All the countries have done an amazing job. Health agencies have done an amazing job. And the worst thing that we can have happen right now is just to get too excited and really excited that let's just open it all up. Let's let everybody on the ship without at least running a test phase. And, and I hope it all goes well. God, I really hope it all goes well because I don't want the naysayers to start pointing at us and going, see, see, told you, told you cruising is bad. Um, I would have preferred, you know, maybe a little step, maybe a, a, do some tests on a couple of ships, maybe for a month, a month and a half, 
just to see because you know people are going are going to get infected on the ship there's just no way around that if you're in a public space you are probably going to get uh, you, ha you have a good chance of getting infected but what's going to happen to the cruise you know we are able to get on the ship we get on the ship we're there for a week we're there for two weeks i'm not concerned at all about the current protocols in terms of being a passenger my big concern is how will this impact the crew and how will it impact the uh, ship operation? So I'm really curious what you all think, you know, whether we think we're moving too fast or if, you know, I know everybody's excited. We're finally getting back to normal, but would you have preferred to maybe have seen a test, a little test phase before we actually opened it all up? So I think we've got a lot of people joining in. Wow. Hello, the Hamill family. How are you? Chase, your profile picture is your drone above the Carnival Vista when you were in Montego Bay. Oh, that's very cool, Chase. I love it. That is really, really nice. I love that. Christy Hamill, how are you? Tristan, what are you saying? Single traveler interior 207 plus 150 tax seven day. Isn't that funny? The tax is it's almost the same price as the cruise. Oh, that's hysterical. But for seven nights, I mean, you're talking, what, $357 for seven nights? It, it, this is one of the big reasons why we really enjoy cruising. And you you hit the nail right on the head there, uh, Mr. Tristan. It is such a cost-effective way to travel. That's why I love it so much. I mean, one, you're in a different place every single day. I love that the hotel moves. You don't need to leave the hotel. You don't need to go anywhere. The hotel is just going to take you wherever it is you're going next. But it's so cost-effective. I mean, what is that? What is that? 357 divided by seven would be like a ridiculous amount of money, right? Let, let, I'm going to get my calculator. I'm going to figure it out right now. 357 divided by seven. Oh, or times seven, which is the wrong way to do it. But $51 a day. I mean, where else are you going to go for $51 a day? You get your hotel. You're going to get entertainment. Uh, you're going to get food. Uh, you're going to get to uh, get off the ship and go places, you know. I mean, fifty-one dollars a day—that is absolutely amazing. So, thanks for, but Christian, you are at, you are all over it, man. As far as finding the deals, that's absolutely amazing. So, um, let's see. You're on the way to the in-laws, but you're driving <laughs> to catch up. Nice, nice. And so, for those of you new to the channel, uh, where's Walter? You have probably seen some of our vlogs on here, and you've seen, you know, one of the things I'm really excited about are those uh, cruise relaxation videos. You know, during the pandemic. I really was missing those views, those views of the ocean. And I said to Rebecca, once we get on the ships, I'm just going to start filming as many views as I possibly can. Because God forbid this ever happens again and we can't get on a ship for an extended amount of time. I at least want to be able to have those views. If I can sit on the on the couch and just, you know, have a drink and enjoy. So um, let's see who else is on here. Chase, you're saying you asked your friend what he thought about Carnival during this move. He didn't like the idea. You know, it it it, it is going to be very interesting. It is going to be very interesting. Let's see. True Project Racing is asking, hey, Walter, have you heard? Let's pop this up there. Hey, Walter, have you heard what's going on in Mexico? How does this affect cruises? Ensenada was hoping to book for the end of September. I don't know, to be honest with you. I don't know how any of this affects Ensenada. Uh, at all. Um, I wish I could give you some uh, some update on that. But, you know, basically what the cruise lines are essentially saying, September 5th or September 6th, if you are vaccinated, you're not going to have to have a test. If you're unvaccinated, you're going to have to have a test, all subject to the local rules and regulations. And those are changing all the time. Like I believe Grand Cayman is still requiring a test as of right now. That could change by September. So, you know, it it's kind of annoying because there's such a hodgepodge of information going on and there's different rules and there's different this, different that. So, you know, you just have to kind of play it by ear and then see, you know, what happens when, when you get to that point, because what we're saying right now today, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I was getting whiplash last week. It's like, you know, Carnival and Royal Caribbean say, here's our new protocols. And then Norwegian comes out with a different protocol. And then it's like Carnival and Norwegian say, well, wait a minute, we're going to change our protocols. And it's like everything is changing so fast. So if you're booking for something in like the end of September, I don't know what the rules are going to be at the end of September. They could be completely different by then. And let's hope, let's hope that we don't get uh, any kind of a serious surge with what's going on right now would be a five because if if it really is a big surge well then everything will change again you know so 
we're in it. We're in a weird time right now. We're in that changeover time where everybody just wants to pull off all the band-aids and just go while at the same time, we've got to be kind of cautious and kind of keep an eye out for things. What you got, Rebecca? Rebecca says when you get closer to the cruise. Okay. So Rebecca saying when, when you get closer to the cruise, just keep checking those protocols because they are literally changing <laughs> almost by the day. Norwegian really like dropped the hand grenade in on everybody and said, yeah, you guys are saying six days. You know, we're just going to open it up. You guys just come on our ship and we'll just figure it out. Um, so they kind of threw a hand grenade in there, which was kind of funny. So um, let's see. So true project. You're saying you just wrapped up your cruise and you want to go back to test. what? Yeah. So, you know, the testing is not that difficult. Um, it really isn't. We do the home proctored testing, although it's looking a lot like by the time we get to December, and our symphony cruise is going to be a six night cruise. We probably won't be testing because we are fully vaccinated. We're fully up to date, all of that good stuff. So, um, you know, it, but like I said, I just really, I really hope that nothing happens. Uh, Royal Caribbean and Norwegian actually formed a healthy sales center or something like that, where they do to have, they have doctors, they have experts, they have all of that. So these people are advising them. And it's not like the cruise lines are just making, you know, rules up just because, they are consulting with people that are obviously consulting with the CDC, but then they have their own uh, doctors and specialists and all of that. I really hope this works because if this works, then basically they're, they're going to pull all the gloves off uh, at some point. They will probably continue to test the unvaccinated for, I don't know how much longer, but probably for a while they will continue to test the unvaccinated just to go ahead and protect their crew members. But, you know, as far as the testing of the vaccinated, that will probably go away sooner than later. It's all like flying. So um, U.S. Patrician is saying, I think Disney is just waiting it out. I mean, yeah, it is interesting. Disney hasn't said a word. But then again, Disney is kind of their own universe. You know, they really are. The, they're the most expensive. Uh, they've got beautiful ships. They've only got the five ships. That's it. Uh, they will have seven in a couple of more years. So they are really their own universe. They are their own company. They really do stand alone. I really wish that the Cruise Line International Association, CLIA, had taken the lead on all of this. I mentioned this uh, you know, way back when, when the protocols were starting to change. I really wish we could have had just one nice unified <laughs> statement with everybody rather than the cruise lines trying to one up each other. And like every couple of days, like, wait, what's going on? And then like the question earlier about Ensenada and some of these other locations, like, well, what's going on? Well, we don't know. Uh, so, it, so it is just kind of that. We don't know. You really do need to just keep checking the cruise line website as you get closer and closer, especially those last two weeks. You want to just keep checking just to make sure something doesn't blow up. Uh, Twitter is a great place to find uh, the latest information. And of course, cruisecritic.com. You know, we talk about cruisecritic.com a lot. That is a fantastic website to um, to stay up on things. Uh, they, they have breaking news all the time on the cruise critic website. I also go to cruise hive, H I B E cruise hive.com. They're always showing some breaking news and things like that. But so it seems like, uh, we're doing pretty good. So Royal, you had two updates already and both are in the next, how many people are actually going to keep Chrissy, you need to finish your statement there. I can't quite tell what you are asking. Um, and while we're here, I am going to throw this up there. Are the changes affecting your viewpoint, your way of thinking? I've seen some people saying, you know what? No, I don't feel safe coming on a cruise now. Whereas, of course, other people are jumping up and down saying, yay, this is exciting. Now I can finally get back onto a, a cruise ship. Kind of curious. Are these changes going to affect you in any way, uh, you know, in, in terms of moving forward? And, and of course, you know, as we're having this discussion, anything you guys want to ask, any any uh, questions that, that you have in terms of cruising, in terms of travel, in ter terms of the theme park. And if you've got some friends, you got some family who are cruise curious, maybe they're thinking about their first cruise. They've never taken one. Tell them, come on over and join us. We'll be here for an hour. We'll, we'll be here till at least 6 p.m. Eastern time talking about things. And we'll be happy to try our best to answer any question that, that you all may have. So, Hamill, Christy, you're saying how many people, let's, let's pop that up there. How many people are going to keep checking to keep up with the ports and what the ports want? I bet no one wants to keep up with it. Yeah. So Rebecca's saying change it to making you a tad nervous. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, that's what you're going to kind of have to do. And it's not so much that you have to keep up with the ports, Christy. You just got to keep up with your cruise line. 
That's all. So if you're going on a cruise, every single cruise line, and that's the one thing that they've done a very good job of. When you go to the homepage of the cruise line, it's right there at the top. Our current protocols or our healthy sales center or whatever it is that it says up there, uh, it's right there. It's right on the homepage. So you don't have to worry about checking all the ports. You just simply need to check the cruise line website and then see what the itinerary is that, that you're going on. You know, obviously all the cruise lines are trying to be the first to allow everybody back on the ship to make it easier for the unvaccinated. They don't have to test this and that. Um, but you don't necessarily have to check all the ports. You just got to look at the cruise line and look at your particular itinerary. So, Rebecca, you said uh, it's making you a little bit nervous. Why? Just uh, too many people in uh, in the closed quarters. Yeah. So, you know, so Rebecca is saying that, you know, having that many unvaccinated people on the ship for a week makes her a little bit tad nervous. And at the same time, we do go to Disney World. We go to Epcot. We go to Magic Kingdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Rebecca's saying that it's not like she's not going to do it, but it does make her just a little bit, you know, concerned that there might be a lot of folks on there that, you know, we have no control over. I mean, that ship holds, we're going to be on the Symphony of the Seas December 17th. So that's around 6,300 people, 6,500 people maximum. We're going to be around a lot of people. We were around 5,500 to 5,900 on the Mardi Gras back in March, but that's when the majority of the people had to be vaccinated. So it will definitely be a different experience. So what do you got? So Rebecca is saying that she may do some more masking, especially in the elevators, which might not be a bad idea for, for a lot of folks, you know, because you're going to be in the tight quarters in the elevator. If you feel uncomfortable, certainly have a mask with you and maybe go ahead and, you know, put it on in the, uh, in the elevators. Joe's jungle. Hey, how are you? Good to see you over here, man. Thanks for joining us over here. Chase. Oh, that's kind of fun. Chase is saying that the Norwegian Prima is in the middle of the Mediterranean right now. Yeah, she is uh, moving around, getting ready for her big uh, her big coming out party. So she looks absolutely spectacular if you've not seen any of the shots of it. Uh, and it was really cool. There, there was one gentleman who was flying in for the whole Prima uh, uh, events. And he had a beautiful shot of the Prima and the Viva sitting basically side by side. And it looks like the Viva was just going to follow her right out and go cruising as well. The Viva will be out in 2023. Prima is coming out now. Uh, and it should be absolutely spectacular. It does look like, by the way, for those of you in Galveston, it does look like the Prima is coming in to do at least a few cruises out of Galveston, which should be absolutely lovely. So, yeah, uh, she is definitely on her way. It's going to be exciting to see, you know, What's going to be going on with uh, with all of that? So uh, let's see. You're waiting 15 days. True Project Racing is asking. You're going to be in Nassau in March. It's a Hotel Atlantis accessible from the port. If you mean walking to it, it is. It's a bit of a walk. Uh, I think there are some shuttles that go. We have not actually been to Atlantis. Um, we tend to stay on the ship in Nassau. We tend to make that a ship day so we can take advantage of everything that's on the ship. But uh, I have heard of people walking over to Atlantis, but I do believe there's some shuttles because, I mean, you can see it, obviously, right from the port. Um, that is a big port now. You know, I think they're setting up for seven ships now or something like that. <laughs> it's a very busy port. Uh, but I do believe that that you can uh, walk under. Um, yeah, so right now, our friend Stephanie over uh, at Sean and Steph, and I'll pop that up here right now. She has a Wonder of the Seas uh, vlog going on right now. And she just went to Nassau, but she didn't go to Atlanta. She went over, I believe to Margaritaville, which has a water park in Nassau. And she did a wonderful vlog of getting over there. Uh, actually we haven't seen it yet. It just popped up, but, uh, we were talking to her the other day about it. And she was saying that it was absolutely fantastic. It's the first time she's done that. So you may even want to consider, you know, possibly going over to Margaritaville, but if you go check out Steph's vlog right now, it's the wonder of the seas vlog. Um, and for those of you who are heading to Coco Cay, she has a, uh, Odyssey of the Seas vlog that is absolutely wonderful where, uh, she shows the Coco Beach Club. So that's absolutely fantastic as well. Um, according to, uh, Stephanie, to, for those of you who are just tuning in and you wonder why I keep looking over here, my wife, Rebecca is sitting off camera. She doesn't like to be on camera. She has a lot of knowledge, but she doesn't like to be on camera. So she sits over here basically like my producer. And um, she was just pointing out that Stephanie said she liked uh, Margaritaville more than Atlantis. So we've not been to either or. So, uh, you know, that's just her. That, that's what she said. So that's pretty good. 
Uh, let's see. So Christy is saying, oh, by the way, Christy, I love that icon. That is absolutely cute. Look at you guys. You guys look absolutely freaking adorable in that icon. Um, Christy, you're thinking that you thought to keep at least 12 and up fully vaccinated and at least not get rid of it completely. Well, yeah, you know, that that's where we've been for a year. I mean, that is basically where we have been for a year. And I know the PNO Iona over in Europe, she did go for five weeks with similar protocols as to what we're going to start doing now. And apparently the data was good from them. I don't know. We haven't done it here in the United States. Nobody has actually tested this in the United States. They're just jumping right into it. So hopefully, you know, like I said, hopefully this is all going to work out well. Um, you know, we don't really have data from things like Disney World or stadiums or theaters because they don't track any of that. The cruise ships do. And and as I said, you know, I'm not so concerned about myself coming on a ship for a week or two. I'm more concerned about those crew members who are there for six months, nine months. Are they going to be exposed to a lot more? Are they going to end up in quarantine a lot more, uh, especially because they are in tighter quarters than we are? So but yeah, I you know, I hopefully it's all going to work. Hopefully it's all going to work. I mean, I, I would I would hate to see the cruise industry take a major step back and give all the naysayers a reason to start pounding on the cruise lines again, like they did at the beginning of the pandemic. So, yeah. Um, yeah, Chase. By the way, Chase, I'm going to pop you up here, too. That is a beautiful drone shot you got there. I love that. Uh, but, yeah, you've seen the pics on Instagram of Prima and Viva. I've never seen two ships that are at that look like they're basically done side by side like that. That was actually really cool the way the two ships look. And basically as soon as the Prima pulled out the Viva, they flooded that dry dock and brought her out to, and put her right where the uh, Prima was sitting. Um, I know our, our friend Steph, we talked about Steph earlier. She is going on the Prima uh, the end of this year. Was that this year? She's going when, when it goes from New York back that that's the cruise she's going on the transatlantic going back the other way. Okay, yeah, it might be next spring. Yeah, because she's going to be here for the winter season. So probably next spring, well, Steph will be on it. And that's the one that has the three-level uh, go-kart track. I've not been on a ship with a go-kart track yet. I do want to go on one of those. They look absolutely freaking amazing. Um, let's see. Oh, that's too funny. So true. <laughs> Wife said Margarita Bill it is. So there you go. So and and seriously, go over to, to Steph's blog and watch it and see what it's all about. Uh, I believe they have a water park. Um, and of course, it's Margarita Bill. A lot of the uh, the uh, cruise ports these days, especially in the Caribbean, they do have Margarita Bills now. It's like they've taken over for senior frogs in a lot of these places. And it's free, actually, to go use the pool. They have these big, lovely pools. But this one in Nassau, they do actually have a charge because they have a water park and they have some other things going on. And Steph says she had an absolutely fantastic time. So, and yes, listen to the wife. That's what I do. People ask me all the time, Walter, where are you going? What are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. Rebecca made the plans. I'm getting on the ship and wherever the ship takes me, that's where I'm going. I have input, obviously. I'll help her pick the ship. I'll help her, you know, pick the itinerary. But then once once that happens, a lot of times Rebecca just takes over and she starts planning the dinners and the excursions and everything else. So, so yes, live with the wife, definitely. Um, let me change out that banner. There we go. I'm getting used to I'm getting used to StreamYard over. I'm so I'm really good at TikTok now. Y'all who have been with me on TikTok, you know, I've figured out the whole TikTok thing. Still figuring out the YouTube thing. So thanks for joining in with us and and uh, hanging out with us on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, by the way, in the comments, let me know if you think this is a good time to hang out or is there another time? I've got like six other times that YouTube tells me based on the analytics that there would be a large a larger audience. But you know, in the comments, if you want to just throw in like a day and a time that you think might work. We do the TikToks on Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. I might start dual streaming those. We'll see. We might have some fun with those. So um, my wife said Margaritaville. That's it. Um, Christy is saying she, exactly she worries about those crew members. They are there for six months in those small quarters, like unlike us. I mean, they are. And I don't know if they still do it, but they used to do it where even in some cases there were four to a cabin, but there were like only two berths. Or something like that. So two people would be sleeping while the other two were working, and then they would rotate out. I don't know if they still do that. You know, after the pan pandemic, they probably do because I mean they can't really make a lot of changes to those crew quarters down there. They don't have a lot of crew quarters compared to you know the cabins up above. And of course, you know, with this relaxing of everything, and you know, Carnival has said we're going back to 110. percent That means that the quarantine cabins are also going away. 
So that means that anybody who does contract COVID is going to have to quarantine in place. As far as I can tell, maybe they'll have a few cabins, but uh, now it's kind of looking like if they're going to open it up and they're going to take the ship back to 110%, then you will have uh, no quarantine cabins. You know, there won't be any place to put anybody who, uh, who has it. So, um, so Chase, what's in Cozumel right now? The Carnival Breeze, Ecstasy, and Grandeur of the Seas. Awesome. Awesome. So next, really want to know when and where is your next cruise or your vacation? Oh, man. Let's, let's talk about something a little more positive rather than the, than the protocols at the moment. Although, if you want to talk about the protocols, more than happy to do that. And more than happy to give you any advice, tips. We already got one person going to Margaritaville now. Awesome. <laughs> I need a margarita. You know, that would be kind of cool. I could get a Margaritaville machine to put it right here. Because, you know, unlike TikTok, I have room. I have, like, all this space to fill. I have all this space. So I could put a Margaritaville machine here. I could put an espresso machine here. You know, because on TikTok, you're only seeing me. But here, we've got all this room. And, wow, you can really see the pictures behind me. I have to put a little more light back there so you can really see them. But those are all... If you've never been with us before, all of those are pictures from our cruises back there and all printed from Costco, <laughs> Costco member warehouse, <laughs> where we got all those pictures made up. So that's a lot of fun. But our next cruise is going to be December 17th. Way too long. Way too long. Uh, we will be on the Symphony of the Seas. It'll be our very first Oasis class. We're really looking forward to that. We've never done the Oasis class. We were supposed to do the Odyssey of the Seas. Uh, we were, I really want to do bumper cars. I really want to do the iFly, but they changed the itinerary. They took away Coco K. So we booked on symphony instead. You know, we still know that if the weather's rough, we won't get into Coco K, but that's okay. You know, at least, at least we got a shot at it. So, um, Tristan, Margarita blender, my screen, <laughs> uh, you know, you bring up the Margaritaville cruise. I will admit that is the one cruise line I don't really have any desire to go on. If they want to, uh, if they want me to come on as a vlogger and comp me a cruise on the Margaritaville, I, I'll go on it. But that's an old ship, people. That is a really old ship. And she was in kind of rough shape before uh, they did the Margaritaville takeover, and they did send her in the dry dock. It looks like the cabin's got some TLC. Certainly, she got a new paint job. She got the new uh, wrap on her. But from the vlogs that we've seen, it's still an old ship, and it still needs a lot of work. She needed to stay in dry dock for quite some time and really get a full overhaul. So, I, you know, I'll be curious to see how that cruise line does. Obviously, tying themselves to Jimmy Buffett, not a bad idea. They're getting, They're certainly getting a lot more press than they have in the past, but... You know, for the prices they're charging, you know, you can take a seven night cruise, no problem. So I'm going to choose that seven night cruise or a five night cruise on the Royal Caribbean Mariner of Seas before I go get on that ship. So, you know, no offense to those people who started that line. I wish them the best of luck. It's just not a, a, a ship that I'm rushing to get on. So, um, <laughs> your wife has already looked up the Margaritaville. <laughs> Yeah, we got. We'll all have to go watch Stephanie's vlog right after this and go see what it's all about because she really had a good time. I love Steph so much. She is the most amazing person in the world. Um, Chase the Cruiser is asking, what type of a room did we book for the symphony? We have a junior suite. It's what we have, uh, right? Yes. So this is this is a it's an interesting tale of this cruise. We originally booked. Jewel of the Seas, like last year, two years ago, when we lived in Texas, it was going to be a Christmas and New Year's cruise. It got canceled because of the pandemic. So then we booked a Norwegian Fjords cruise, ironically enough, on the Jewel of the Seas. In fact, we should be flying to Amsterdam like this week to go meet up with the ship or next week. So, but we had to cancel that because of current situations going on here in Florida with us. And so we had to reschedule again. So this is our third time booking this particular cruise, and it will be December 17th on the Symphony of the Seas. Um, yeah, we had future cruise credit from the Jewel. We also had a Christmas cruise booked on Mariner uh, this past Christmas, and I decided to cancel it because that was when Omicron was really coming on strong, and I didn't feel all that comfortable going on. But Stephanie went out. We were supposed to actually go with Stephanie. It was her first cruise after the death of her husband. We were supposed to be on the ship with her. She did go. 
and said she had a fabulous time. So of course I was kicking myself like crazy afterward uh, that, that we didn't actually go. So what are you going to do? Uh, they ain't comping you the, uh, the PR team <laughs> as you on the don't sell list. Uh, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. But you know what? Those are the kind of people that, that you need to get back on the ships. You know, if I'm saying that I'm not going to sail on it, then you invite me on there and see if, if you prove me wrong, like the Virgin voyages, you know, Virgin voyages, it did not seem like it was going to be a ship for us. All that marketing was, you know, we're going to get the people who don't cruise. We're going to get all the young, young people. We're going to get all the beautiful people to come on the ship. That's what it looked like with all the marketing. And that was the hype that they did with all their marketing. And now if you go to the Virgin Voyages site, there's older people on there. There's people our age, there's people older than us on there. When we went on Virgin Voyages, it was uh, anywhere from 20 years old, you know, actually 18 years old up to, I'd say, possibly in their 90s is one lovely couple that we saw going around in there. So it really is. If you're a fan of celebrity cruise lines, if you're a fan of Disney cruise lines, if you're a fan of princess cruise lines, you will probably really enjoy what Virgin Voyages has, has going on, especially if you like good food. You're eating in a specialty dining restaurant every single night. So it's absolutely amazing. So, yeah, you know, Tristan, one of the things that I have learned, you know, I, I have gotten to either know some of the big bloggers or I know how things work based on, uh, on some of the folks. Like I, I've gotten to know Tony at Lolita Loca, really nice guy gotten to know Gary Bembridge uh, just digitally uh, through Twitter and some conversations that we've had uh, digitally. Super nice guy. And I've heard he's a really nice guy. Tony actually came to uh, uh, Sean's funeral last March and we got to sit with him for a couple hours. Just a lovely man. Really great guy. But what I have learned is that most of them, unless they say it, they are paying for these cruises. Um, in some cases, they might pay a media rate because the media gets a lower rate to book a cruise. But for the most part, they are paying just for that very reason. They don't want the cruise line to be able to influence what they're saying. Um, and like the Wonder of the Seas, there were literally, I think, 70 or 80 uh, vloggers on that inaugural cruise. And a lot of them were invited by Royal Caribbean. But those who took the comp room said, look, we're going to do an honest review. So that is one thing that I try to do with everything I just try to give you guys an honest opinion. You know, if I like something, I like it. If I don't like it, I don't like it. There's nobody influencing me. There's nobody paying us right now to do any of this. We're doing this just because we enjoy doing it. And honestly, I need somebody to talk to because Rebecca won't talk to me. So at least I get to talk to you, my people. I get to talk and say hi and, and enjoy our conversations. <laughs> um, awesome. Cool. You have a good rest of your day if you got a bug out. But yeah, go check out Stephanie's uh, uh vlog over there she is an absolutely lovely person and for those of you who are coming down to disney world you will see her work on the uh, on cinderella's castle for the enchanted show she did some of that artwork there she worked uh, on those disney projects she's got a really cool project that she's working on um that she can't tell us she's like this is really really cool i can't tell you she does that all the time to us she starts to tell us something and then she's like but i can't tell you yeah. Oh, yeah. If you go to Finding Nemo, she was uh, on the team that, re that redid that whole, uh, all the artwork that's on the big video screen in the background. Her, she was part of that team that did that. Um, so, yeah, she's absolutely amazing. I love her. Um, how was August? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, we didn't go. We didn't go, Tristan. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we're, we're going to reschedule for another night. We didn't get to go. So uh, Tristan was just asking uh, how it was over there uh, in Disney. We were supposed to meet up with a bunch of friends. We haven't seen the Enchanted show in a while. We haven't actually been to Magic Kingdom in a while. So we were going to meet up with a bunch of friends and go over there. We just, it is just, we are at that point right now here in Florida where it's just too dang hot to do anything, <laughs> even at night. And Rebecca's like, I'm going to melt. Let's wait till maybe September. To go see it. I mean, the show's running until the end of the year, so we can just go see it anytime. So, yeah, Tristan, we did not all get together and go do it. Um, yeah. So, by the way, Tristan, I know you are going to be uh, coming in for possibly working at Disney. So, I'm very, very excited. Um, yeah. Let me see. Whoops. What did I just do? There we go. Still getting used to it. Hey, Tammy, I can totally look at this test. Yes, we can all see it. There you are, Tammy. Hi. 
welcome to the group <laughs> yeah so yeah we can see that uh i don't did i did i hopefully i didn't miss a question from you um but if i did rebecca is also keeping an eye she's o over here watching everything um Huh? I can't see, unless you pop them up, I can't see them. Oh, okay. Um, if you go vertical, you might. Well, Tristan, the thing about September, it is, um, it's hot. <laughs> it can be hot. It, I think October is when we really start to finally, at night, we're going to start dropping into the 60s, maybe in October. But September is still going to be hot. The humidity will start to drop off. The thing about September, too, is that generally the rains will start to let up. We're not going to get these monsoon rains generally in September. So, yeah, it should be a little bit uh, quieter. Yeah, Rebecca's saying she'd be happy with low 60s. Low 80s. Oh, low 80s. Yeah, she'd be happy with low 80s. I can't read your writing, you know. I tried to give her a microphone. Uh, for those of you who follow us on TikTok, I did try to give Rebecca a microphone. Yeah. Get her to have a microphone so she can actually talk to you all, but she doesn't even want a microphone. She doesn't want to talk to you. So, I mean, she's making me talk to you. <laughs> but yay, Tammy, your first time on YouTube. Welcome. Welcome to YouTube. Uh, yeah, so we're going to start, uh, we're going to start, you know, bouncing back and forth. We're definitely going to keep the TikTok live because we're having a grand, a grand old time over there. But uh, we're going to start branching out, coming over here to YouTube as well. And what I really like about YouTube is that I can have actual guests on here. You know, we had Christy and we had that whole conversation about children that we couldn't do on TikTok because she needed to have a thousand followers. So I'm reaching out to some folks and I'm going to try and get uh, multiple guests on here as we move forward, because at least, you know, YouTube allows me to invite pretty much anybody uh, with a link. I can bring them in the stream yard and uh, we can just have a conversation. So uh, watch for me to start having more guests uh, as we move forward, because I think that'll be a lot more fun rather than just me sitting here. Uh, picking a topic and just talking for the whole hour. <laughs> um, what what else have we got here? The drink packages. Anybody got thoughts on drink packages? You know, that's always a hot topic of discussion. You know, do you get a drink package? Do you not get a drink package? You know, everybody, oh, get the drink package, get the drink package, get the drink package. But then you might be paying the cruise lines, you know, an extra $500, $700 that you didn't need to spend. Uh, the cruise lines are happy to take your money. Uh, they want you to get the drink package because they are pretty certain that you're probably not going to use the entire drink package and they're going to end up making money on that. I you know, most people. yeah, for most people. Uh, there will be a few. Uh, that, that that will definitely get their money's worth out of that drink package. But we have started doing the math and we have found now that the refreshment package is working for us. Uh, some, some ships call it a soda package or whatever it is. But it in the case of what we're doing on the Symphony of the Seas, it's called a refreshment package. So we get soda, we get soft drink, we get mocktails. I get my specialty coffees. I get my lattes, my cappuccinos and all that. And then we'll just simply pay uh, a la carte for any alcohol that, that we drink. And that's going to work out well. And that's in the $20. What, what is that? 20 something. Uh, it varies, but I think we paid 22. So we pay per person. So we paid 22. So we paid $44 a day for the two of us to, uh, to do that refreshment package. And then we'll probably add on, um, you know, some cocktails and things like that. You know, I'll probably have two or three cocktails in the evening. So, um, Tristan, you're saying, yeah, bottled water. Disney expensive for bottled water. Royal is 16 for 24. Yeah. Yeah, the bottled water can be expensive. That was one of the nice things, and I know some of the ships are starting to do it. Virgin Voyages had a ton of those water stations. Well, maybe not a ton, but they, they did have a, a bunch of those water stations where we had our own water bottles, and you could just go fill up the water bottles uh, yourself and not have to keep buying bottled water, bottled water. And a lot of them are actually going to box water now, which is actually kind of interesting. You get a box of water instead of uh, a, a bottle. So that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, so I, is bottled water included in the refreshment package? It is. So yeah, so we get bottled water included as well. Now, the one thing, uh, Cruise Line, obviously Disney includes all of those soft drinks and Virgin Voyages included all of the soft drinks as well. You got your Coke products, you got your iced tea, you got mocktails, you got uh, basic. Mocktails weren't included. The mocktails were not included in the, uh, oh, okay, I take on that. Virgin. On Virgin, the mocktails were not included. I take that back. Um, but, you know, you had your basic beverages included, so you didn't have to go paying for those. Of course, you had to pay for specialty coffee, but they had coffee and tea in the galley that was uh, uh, that you could just go up there and get. I, it wasn't my favorite coffee, 
It was kind of weird. The coffee in the galley kind of had like a almost like a chicory taste to it for some reason. But the coffee that they brought to our cabin for room service was delicious. So I don't I don't know what the difference was between the two coffees, but uh, the stuff in the galley I wasn't a big fan of, but the stuff uh, that we got in our room service was really quite good. And I will say their their baristas are excellent on Virgin Voyages, but they close early. I don't know why. I mean, they were closing at like nine, maybe 10. I think before 10 o'clock, I think they were closing. So they were closing early, which kind of surprised. But then I did discover that I, I could go to Sips Champagne Lounge and they had a stunning espresso machine back there where they could make its cappuccinos and stuff. Uh, Christian is saying, Tristan is saying, if you're cheap like me, get, get a bunch of waters and bring your water flavor mixers. Yeah, you've done that, right, Rebecca? You brought like some flavors, would you? Yeah, she'll do that from time to time. And she's got like the, the little Mio thing and she's got the powders and whatnot. So yeah, you can do that. But that's certainly a money saving feature to go ahead and bring some of your own powders and stuff like that. You know, on the Virgin Voyages, we knew that we were going to have our own bar and we brought a couple of bitters and we brought some simple syrup with us. Um, now that we've done, if we ever do a sweet again, I've got it in my head, more of the stuff that we would bring on something like that. But it was kind of fun having our own bar. But yeah, certainly you can bring some mixers with you. You can bring like a little lemonade package with you, the iced tea package with you, and just mix it up with the water. And I, and I do know that more shifts are, and actually all of the shifts do have a water station. You know, it's usually there with all the soft drinks. So you can just bring your own, you know, bottles with you. And you really should just bring your own bottles with you. Just fill them up at those water stations and then you can add whatever you need. And you don't have to worry about getting bottled water or anything like that. That's something that Rebecca has really started doing these days. Um, I see Rebecca is writing furiously right now. I wish y'all could just, I, I got to get a mirror. So I can pop up a mirror and just see her right there. What are you writing down? Oh my God, her, her Sharpie ran out. So she had to switch Sharpies. This is, this is a true tragedy, people. <laughs> She's over here doing this. Uh, and thank you for all of you who are here for the first time, uh, you know, hanging out with us for the first time. Uh, Rebecca is saying they usually request you use clean glass to fill the bottles. Oh, that's true. But, you know, that is the nice thing about those, those, uh, those ones on Virgin Voyages is just a sensor. You put it under there. So there, there's no contact with anything. Um, but yeah, she's saying, you know, use a glass and dump it into your bottle potentially. So, um, but that is the drink package. Oh, I, I've got another comment. Let me touch that. Come on. There she goes. WPM. I don't know what that means, Tristan. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I see your comment, but I don't know what it means. <laughs> so I do apologize. Um, how about this? This is kind of fun. Where, when, which ship did you go on for your very, very first cruise? Kind of curious. All of you who have taken a cruise, what was your first cruise? What ship was it? Where did you go? I've told the story on TikTok, and I'll tell it here while I'm waiting for some answers. Um, we went on the Caribbean Princess in 2006. It was our 10th wedding anniversary, and I did not want to go on that cruise. Me, the guy who started this channel to get other people to go on cruises, I did not want to go on that cruise. I wanted nothing to do with it. And not only was it our first cruise, it was 14 nights. It was a seven-day Eastern, seven-day Western with a, you know, we come back. Uh, uh, it was a back-to-back, -back basically. I didn't even want to go. And she booked an aft balcony. That's you know, the first time, you know, first time on a ship. We get a balcony, and we're on the aft right back there by the wake. I wanted nothing to do with that ship. I wanted nothing to do with cruising. I don't know why we're going on a cruise. I thought it was interesting at first, and then the more I thought about it, I'm like, I don't want to go on a ship. This is stupid. Well, three days into that cruise, we were down at the future cruise desk booking our next cruise. <laughs> I was having a great time and I loved it. And that was 18 cruises ago. And unfortunately, right now we only got one. I would be I would be like Super Mario. If, if you have not seen Super Mario on Royal Caribbean, he just hit 10,000 points. He's been on over 900 cruises. He cruises 50 weeks a year. He is known as Super Mario. He is an unofficial ambassador for Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines because he is always on there. So that is absolutely fantastic. And that, that, if I could do that, I would totally do that. Um, Tristan is saying the Norwegian gem, if he recalls, seven day to Florida and Nassau, November 2011. That is awesome. That, that, is, a, that is a smaller ship. 
for sure. That doesn't have all the bells and whistles of her sisters, but that is a nice ship. Uh, let's see. Chase is saying very first cruise carnival dream, June 2017th out of new Orleans. Whoa. We have not done that yet. Uh, Rotan, Belize, and Cozumel. That's a nice itinerary, actually. That's a very nice itinerary, uh, itinerary you've gone on. We, I really would like to sail out of New Orleans. I understand that is a beautiful sail away coming down the Mississippi River and sailing out. And, of course, I'd also love to do New York City because New York City, you know, going under the bridge and sailing past the uh, sailing past the Statue of Liberty looks amazing. In fact, I saw some pictures on Twitter of one of the Oasis-class ships going underneath the Verrazano Bridge. I think they said there was... Uh, 30 feet between the top of the ship and the bridge. That's how close the ship gets. And in New York city, I think as well as in new Orleans, you know, they have to time everything based on the tides um, because if they don't do it right in New York, they could actually run into the bridge. So the tide has to be down. And I think in uh, new Orleans, I think the tide actually has to be up. Uh, I could be totally wrong on that, but um, yeah. Oh, that's kind of cool. Chase, you're saying uh, you went when the NBA finals were happening. So those of you who have never cruised, and you're worried about missing your favorite sporting events, don't worry. You're not going to miss them. They're going to be somewhere on the ship. And if it's big events like uh, like the NBA Finals, like Chase is saying, they will be on the big, big screen. So, you know, it's the NBA. Like Thanksgiving, I think, is the perfect week to go on a cruise. There's going to be no drama around that stupid turkey. You know, you don't have to cook a turkey. You don't have to cook the mashed potatoes. There's no drama around that dinner. And then secondly, you're going to be sitting there by the pool, having a drink, watching the games on, you know, a massive screen out there. We went on Super Bowl weekend. It was our Panama Canal cruise and it was Super Bowl weekend and they didn't do it up by the pool, which I was kind of surprised. But they did it in a massive uh, one, one of their big theaters in the back or the big nightclub in the back. And they put out, you know, they had the chicken wings. They had all, you know, all the all the tailgating food out there. And it was a blast watching it for the whole crowd. So that was really a lot of fun. So, um, yeah, Tristan saying he remembers when the breakaway was new. Uh, I love that. Uh, and now it's not as new. No, the whole breakaway class, you know, there's, there's a whole breakaway plus. So now the breakaway is the smaller one, right? Now there's a breakaway plus. So, um, yeah, so it's been your dream. You know, that's the problem. There's so many new ships. You know, I do have an uh, uh, episode right here on YouTube where I go over. I think there's like 75 ships coming out between now and the uh, end of 2027, these next five years are going to be insane. And Norwegian keeps threatening to, uh, you know, build more ships. You know, they, they have six ships on order, including the Prima and Viva, but they're talking about adding six more ships. And whether they would be the, the Prima class or not, uh, they're talking about already adding six more. So that would be, you know, that many more. So there are a lot of ships coming down the pipeline right now. So this is a great time to be a cruiser. And just having all of this, this is why I need to get a job where I can work remotely and go get on a ship. Like I would sail Virgin Voyages all around. The Wi-Fi on Virgin Voyages was outstanding. Um, yeah, in the Caribbean. We were on Scarlet Lady. The Wi-Fi was outstanding. Rebecca was able to watch TikTok no problem with the standard Wi-Fi. And I. it's only $10 a day to get the upgraded Wi-Fi, which is what I got because I did a couple of live streams from the ship. Wi-Fi was fantastic. I could work on that ship. I would be doing Super Mario, man. I'd be doing 50 weeks a year on something, you know, on some of those ships. So that's my dream is to work remotely and to be able to work at least, say, 10 or 15 weeks a year on a cruise ship so we can try out some of these ships. I don't have enough vacation time to try out all these ships. I don't care if I go work on a ship. I mean, just think about it, right? You've got the ultimate office. You've got the window view looking out at the ocean. Uh, you got your coffee shop right down the hall breakfast buffet or one of the restaurants you can take a lunchtime dip in the pool or you can go play a little round of mini golf you can go to the buffet go back to work and then at night you got dinners you got shows you got all kinds of things going on it's like the ultimate remote workspace so i i would just i would be all over that so um exploring with eric Norwegian Prima is going to be very interesting. I like the idea of going smaller and more outside place, but let's see how, how long that lasts for. Well, we know it's going to last for at least six ships because those six ships are going to be basically the same. I do like what I really like that Norwegian has done. I mean, one, I applaud them. They went smaller, which is very cool. Um, you know, they're not blowing up like uh, Royal Caribbean. I said the icon is going to be even bigger. Um, but what I really like that they did with that ship, it looks like they amplified the fun and they amplified the luxury at the same time. 
So, you know, the fun stuff has really gotten a nice, you know, you got a triple deck uh, go-kart track. You've got uh, all kinds of really cool stuff going on. But then if you look at the main body of the ship, it kind of reminds me of the Celebrity Edge class. Like they really lifted the luxury on that ship as well. So I, I really like what they've done with the Prima class. I'm really looking forward to actually getting on her and seeing what the ship is all about. But uh, yeah, I, I think it's very interesting that they went a little bit smaller. They are going against the grain and instead of getting bigger, bigger, bigger. But I'm really excited. I, I, I really hope the food you know, stands up to what we think it's going to be because uh, Rebecca and I think that Norwegian has some of the best specialty dining in the cruise industry. Main dining room is not our favorite. Uh, we've been on the getaway and the escape. Main dining room, meh. But the specialty restaurant, especially on the escape, we got hooked on Food Republic. Oh, if you go on a Norwegian ship with Food Republic, absolutely positively go there. You might be hurting when you get out of there. But go there. It is a tapas restaurant. It is amazing. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see to see uh, what goes on with that. And yeah, they did add more. I think they added all, more al fresco dining to eat outside, which is absolutely lovely. Um, that's one thing that they could have done on Scarlet Lady that would have been nice. I was kind of surprised that we didn't have any al fresco dining. That would have made it even better. But uh, yeah, it's going to be real interesting to see. Uh, we're getting ready for all of these uh, all of these. Uh, inaugural sailing so we're going to know soon enough exactly what that ship is if uh, you guys don't follow dave monk uh, he is ship monk like a chipmunk but ship ship monk uh on pretty much all the social channels he will be on that first sailing i follow him all the time in fact i'm trying to get dave to come on and do one of these uh one of these live streams he is a prolific uh, uh cruise reporter out of england and I'm trying to get Dave to pop up on one of these live streams so we can really have a good conversation with him as well. Uh, let's see. On the dream you had, let's see. So Chase is saying on the dream you had cabin 9281. It's always good to know, you know, which cabin, which cabins you're looking for. Look at Tristan. Once he becomes a cast member, he'll be looking forward to the Disney Cruise discount. I, I wonder how that works. You know, uh, is it one of those? Is it one of those uh, progressive? discount or like the longer you've been there you know the more of a discount you're going to get uh, that's going to be interesting but you know being a cast member you will get a discount to everywhere like steph it's about to hop on a plane and go over to europe i think on monday she's going to england and she's going to disneyland paris as part of that and i think you know we're here in florida i think you know it's lovely that we have the 50th anniversary going on but i think disneyland paris is just blowing florida out of the water what they're doing for the 30th anniversary over there the drone show, the costume, the marketing, everything about that 30th anniversary. I really wish I could get over to Paris right now and go see that park while this is going on. So, um, Eric, you agree about the specialty dining? Yeah, so specialty restaurant, if, if you've never sailed Norwegian and you're a foodie, they really do have good restaurants. I think the, the main dining room is very middle of the road. Maybe they do that on purpose. <laughs> Maybe they're trying to get you to go up to the specialties. But uh, I don't know that we've had a bad specialty meal on Norwegian yet. They're really, really good. Food Republic, far and away now my favorite. I did like on the getaway, we did the um, the Cirque dinner show. That was kind of cool. You know, like a nice small, like a like a really small version of a Cirque du Soleil meets steampunk. That, that, that was kind of cool. Oh, yeah. Rebecca's saying that Le Bistro is not our favorite. That's the French restaurant. That wasn't our favorite. But, you know, for the most part, we really do enjoy them. I do. The big thing about La Bistro, we don't really like the way it's set up on the two ships we've been on. It's basically set up in a hallway. So if you're eating out in the patio, you're in a hallway, a very busy hallway where people are walking by. That's not the best ambiance for having dinner. Uh, I think the, the Bistro might be better had they set that up as one of the outdoor restaurants. I don't know if it is on the Prima, but uh, just the way they had it set up, it, it really wasn't one of our favorites. But thank you. Thank you so much, Eric, for joining in on the conversation. Uh, for those of you who are new, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do consider subscribing. If you're having a good time chatting with us, if you like what we're doing on the channel, we are really enjoying bringing this all to you. We just have fun. This is literally just fun for me. You know, Rebecca, not so much. That's why she's sitting over there off camera. She, Rebecca tolerates this. <laughs> that's, let's put it to you that way. I, I could do this all day long every day, but Rebecca tolerates it. So it's, so it's really fun. Um, but okay, cool, Tristan. So it is a progressive discount. Awesome. So, oh, and since, you know, Eric brought that up, here's a poll for all y'all. Who has the best food? Who has the best food out there? Maybe as a follow-up, where was your best meal? I know what mine is, but I, I want to let you guys talk a little bit about that because food is big for me. 
and booted big for Rebecca. You know, we, you know, all the bells and whistles, all the game, the rock climbing, the bumper cars and everything about the ship is okay. But it's really the food that's going to make or break the cruise for me. If it, if it's, you know, just a ship that doesn't have a whole lot to do, but the food's really good. Well, then I'm going back on that ship, you know, but, um, Oh, Eric, that's interesting. So you're saying that Princess used to be good, but it's gone down. So we have not been on Princess since right before the pandemic. We went on the Crown Princess. And actually, the problem I had on that ship was I couldn't get a good uh, cocktail. I don't know what was up with the uh, with the bartenders on that particular ship. I couldn't get a good old-fashioned. Uh, I had another, uh, maybe a Cosmopolitan or something. They weren't good. So I switched over to wine instead. And that's, a, that's the first time on any ship I couldn't get a good cocktail. Um, and since I brought that up, my favorite bar at, at sea right now is still on Celebrity, uh, the Celebrity World Class Bar that is on the Solstice Class, and I believe it's on some of the Edge Class ships as well. Fantastic bar. That being said, all the bars on Virgin Voyages were amazing, and Tobacco Road on Norwegian is a really good bar as well. That's where... Huh? Yeah, the Tobacco Road on the Escape, fabulous. I don't know how many ships is on, but if there's a Tobacco Road on the Norwegian ship, that is an absolutely fantastic ship. Arizona Cruise, oh, <laughs> the Discovery Princess Gelato. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were, uh, We were being teased all week by that gelato. But you agree, you felt like the food was a step below what it used to be. You do love their pizza, though. Their their pizza had, had been some of our favorite uh, we have not been on, like I said, since the Crown Princess. Um, but on the Mardi Gras, Carnival Mardi Gras, the pizza was actually really, really good. Fresh made pizza. And on the Scarlet Lady, really, really good pizza as well. Made fresh right there. But that gelato, you know, the Discovery Princess, if you don't know, uh, Princess Cruises had three cruise ships that have been essentially certified by the Italian Chamber of Commerce as making authentic Italian gelato. Discovery Princess is one of those three ships. Um, so... I don't know. I might go, <laughs> I might sail on it just for the gelato. Um, but that is interesting. You know, we'll, we'll uh, we are definitely going to be trying out some of the new princess ships for sure. So it'll be interesting when we go back to see what we think. That, that That's interesting that the two of you are saying that uh, you think the food has gone a little bit downhill. Um, Gigi's and Alfredo's pizza is the best at sea. Well, there you go. Um and Eric, you've never been on Celebrity yet, but you'd have to say NCL is your favorite food for now. Nice, nice. So we have, let's see if I can remember, we have been on Princess, Celebrity, Norwegian, Disney, Royal Caribbean, Virgin, Carnival, Holland, Holland America. So we've been on eight different cruise lines now, over 18 cruises. And so we've got a pretty good handle. But then again, you know, a lot of these cruises were before the pandemic. So things have obviously changed and supply chain issues. Things have changed. So, uh, but in the past, it has been. Um, you hear the Regal has a gelato. Yeah. So, like I said, there's three ships. I know Discovery was one. I don't know what the other two ships are offhand. And they probably all have gelato. Yeah. Every, some of them are certified. Right. Every ship has gelato. Like Celebrity has actually decent gelato. Uh, that went downhill. The last time we were on the Equinox, we didn't think the gelato was nearly as good as it was the last time. So, um, Chase, I'll get to you in a second. Uh, Eric is saying Discovery Princess is a beautiful ship. Great bartenders that know how to make in the old fashion. <laughs> that, you know, that is my favorite drink now. And that is my benchmark. So when I go on a ship, and Rebecca will tell you, that is usually the first cocktail that I will order. And that's kind of my benchmark as to how good is the bartender just in that particular bar. And one of the interesting things about and I keep talking about Virgin Voyage. We'll have to do a whole episode just on Scarlet Lady so we can talk through all of the things on there. But Scarlet Lady was the first ship I've been on where every single bar was good. I mean, even the pool bar, I got an outstanding cocktail made at the pool bar. Pool bar is usually, you know, the fast slushy stuff, the pina coladas, you know, they just whip stuff out. He, I mean, he had a full on bar right there. Yeah, they had some slushy stuff, but that wasn't the focus of what they were doing. So that, that was a really, really good bar. So, yeah, Discovery, that, that whole class of ships, all those new ships that have been coming out, they look outstanding. We have not done any of the, that new classes of ships. They look gorgeous. This is a, oops, where did he go? Uh, Chase, there you are. Sorry, hit the wrong thing. That's a great question, Chase. Um, 
And it's a good question for uh, everybody. I'd, I'd love to see all of you chime in on this one as well. What is your favorite port to cruise out of? Rebecca is saying right now, because we only live an hour away, Port Canaveral is our favorite because it is so close. Um, my favorite one, though, I think is still Fort Lauderdale, um, Port Everglades, just because they have those condos just as you're going out. So you're level with those condos, and there's usually people screaming and yelling in those condos, and they're holding up you know, flags and banners of the various cruise ships, and it's really cute and fun to see. I think that's still my favorite, although I will say Miami is a stunning sail away. Um, I have uh, I have one version of the sail away currently in my cruise relaxation series, and there's another one that's going to come out this Wednesday. I shot uh, uh, aft facing, which is the one that's currently on the uh, on our channel right now. And on Wednesday, I'll be releasing the one that's looking down the side of the ship. So Miami is actually quite a pretty sail away as well, but Fort Lauderdale, just for the pure sail away, I think it's absolutely beautiful. What about you guys? Uh, what ports do you, do, do you guys like? Um, Let's see. Anybody in here? Chase is saying, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Fort Lauderdale only has two ships. Yeah, well, we got everybody sailing out. Everybody should be sailing out right now. Um, well, what's, um... Oh, wow. Sydney, Australia, where the dock is across from the Opera House. Wow. I bet that is absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. And, you know, um, Australia is one of those places where I believe you can, if you book a New Year's Eve cruise and it's done just right, they will park the ship out in the harbor and you get to watch, you know, all the fireworks and stuff going off. Um, yeah, that'll be absolutely amazing. Andy Green, you're looking forward to your first cruise. Looking forward to watching your videos now, too. Well, thank you. And certainly, you know, any questions that, that you might have, uh, you can drop them in the comments of any of those videos. We're happy to do more. I have uh, obviously I have tips going up almost every day on TikTok. And uh, that's what this is all about. You know, any questions that, that you have, anything that we can do to help your first cruise be smoother uh, and more fun, we're happy to help out the best we can. So, um, Carrie, your friend Carrie is asking, why doesn't Carrie have an account? Have Carrie come on here and talk to us. <laughs> when are you going to come on MSC so I can be your cruise director? <laughs> that's too funny. Uh, we do want to do MSC. That's on the list. Those ships are absolutely stunning. Um, right now, I am in that whole job search mode. So first, I got to get myself situated with a new job, and then we'll figure out what cruises we're going to go on next. Uh, 2023 is fast approaching. So I would love to take at least five cruises next year. You know, we are so close. We have all the ports. Uh, we really want to get on the uh, the smaller celebrity ships, too. They sail out of Tampa quite often, so we definitely want to hop onto one of those. But MSC is on the list. And MSC... For those of you watching, if you've never looked at MSC, their pricing can very often be right in line with Carnival. You know, they start at, at the Carnival pricing level, but their ships are definitely a step above most of the Carnival ships. So if you're looking for value, uh, MSC is actually a really good value in their pricing. And there's a lot of great, again, I keep uh, mentioning Steph. Steph has some blogs on her channel uh, about, uh, uh, about their MSC uh, journey. They're supposed to have amazing pizza. You know, uh, Tristan did it. Um, so, yeah. Oh, sorry. Hitting the wrong thing. <laughs> I'm still getting used to this. And by the way, just so you know, this is all coming to you from a tablet. <laughs> I'm blown away. This is actually working. I have a uh, Panasonic GH4 that is connected to my tablet via USB, HDMI to USB. And that, that's how you all are seeing this right now. <laughs> so this is a, uh, a Microsoft Surface tablet that I got, I don't know, four years ago. <laughs> so the fact that all of this is actually working is just blowing my mind. Uh, so it's actually really funny. And I have not screwed it up too bad yet. I think I haven't done too bad of a mistake just yet. So uh, this thing was scheduled for an hour. I see that, that we've gone about an hour. But I do want to throw up one question because I think this could be a little bit of fun to see what you all have to say. It has nothing to do with cruising. Absolutely nothing to do with cruising. But curious your answer. Don't think about it. Just tell me. What do you think? Disney or Universal? Which one are you going to? Disney. Rebecca says Disney. She will say Disney. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you my answer in just a minute. I'd love to know what some of you guys think. Disney or Universal? If you got to pick one, I'm going to give you a free ticket tomorrow to go. Which one are you going to pick? You're not, but... No, I'm not. But if you if, if I was giving you a ticket tomorrow, which one are you going to take? 
going to go to Disney or let's see. Arizona Cruiser is saying Disney. Tammy is saying Disney. Do we have any Universal fans in the house? Oh, that's going to be interesting. So, yeah, Universal or Disney. Um, we are annual pass holders. Well, we were annual pass holders for both. Um, <laughs> Eric is saying that's a hard question the way Disney has been lately. So, yeah, I know Disney gets a lot of bad press, right? And Bob JPEG, somebody really needs to give Bob JPEG some lessons on how to talk to the media. <laughs> it's just not good at it right now. Um, but it is kind of funny. So Eric is saying I might have to say universal. So it's kind of funny. People complain about the uh, people complain about the reservations. They complain about the genie plus. They complain about a lot of this stuff. So we're annual pass holders. We never use the genie. Um, we have never had a problem with a reservation trying to get into the parks. I think we've been to the parks somewhere between forty and fifty times since last since a year ago, August when we first got or September when we first got our passes. We go all the time. Um, I would take Disney over Universal just because, and it. it the foodie in me. I don't think the food is all that great at Universal, and they just have the two parks compared to the four. Um, but they do have Velocicoaster, which is my favorite ride in all of uh, Orlando. Velocicoaster, absolutely. And the Harry Potter sections are, are beautiful. Yeah, and the Harry Potter. Well, the especially a uh, Diagon Alley. So Andy Green is saying he does want to see Harry Potter, and I will applaud the bean counter at Universal, who said, "You know what?" We can make more money if we spread Harry Potter out and force people to buy multi-parts. See, when Disney builds Galaxy's Edge, there's Star Wars right there. So you, so you get a ticket for Hollywood Studios, you can see all of Star Wars. Uh, you know, if you want to go see the Frozen stuff, well, actually, that is in two different parks. But with Harry Potter, you want to ride that stupid train. Well, you got to have a ticket to both parks to go there. And now with Epic coming, the Ministry of Magic is going to be an Epic. So if you really want to see all of Harry Potter, you're going to have to get tickets for all three. So it's, it's going to be pretty funny. Um, but Tristan is saying Disney, you've never been to Universal. You really should. Universal is a hell of a lot of fun. It really is. Um, Eric saying he used to love Disney, but it's changed over the past few years. I mean, yeah, it has changed a lot after the pandemic. They have done uh, a, a lot of different things, and I know a lot of people don't like it. I don't like the whole Genie Plus thing. I think that's just that's making people work too hard. Disney is a lot more work than Universal. I will say that, especially if you're coming in for just a week. You know, it's a lot of work, and I think it's too much. I think Disney has made it too hard for people who are coming in for a week to try and enjoy everything that there is. We're very fortunate to be annual pass holders that we can just go in. Um, you know, when I had the annual passes for Universal, too, I would just go in for a couple hours. I'd hit the Velocicoaster a couple times, maybe ride Hagrid, and then I'm coming back home. With Disney a lot, we go to Epcot for lunch. We go to Epcot for dinner. We go to Animal Kingdom in the morning. Animal Kingdom is just stunning to walk around and stroll. But yeah, Disney has made it a lot harder, I think, on family. So if you're just coming down here for a week, I would probably say, you know, Universal is going to be an easier experience unless than it is going really to Disney. So yeah, unless it's really little kids. Uh, Disney is better for the little kids. Universal, once they get up, you know, say past 11 years old, Universal might be better for those kids for sure. So um, hey, Cindy, how are you? Nice to see you. Welcome. Uh, you're saying even the Disney ship, you would not go on the new ship. The older ships are made. I really do want to go on the wish. Uh, yes, you are absolutely correct. The fantasy and dream. We've been on the fantasy. Stunning, stunning. Um, but I really do want to go on the wish. I really do. I'd like to see what that's all about. I, they, they got me with hooked bourbon bar. I mean, the barbershop has a bourbon bar. I'm like, all right, I want to go see that. You know, that the whole star Wars hyperspace lounge. I, I really don't care, but the hooked bourbon bar. Yeah, you got me. I want to go see that. But I will gladly go back on the fantasy tomorrow if I could. Such a beautiful ship. Um, yeah, he's saying the older ships. So, yeah. oh, Rebecca was just asking if you were referring to the original, the Magic and the Wonder, or the Fantasy and the Dream. We actually haven't been on the Magic or the Wonder. Tristan saying that reservations are okay. It's just bad when the holiday. Well, it's just bad around the holidays anyway. The good thing about the reservations, though, with the holidays is you know whether you can get in or not. You know, on Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, they have to close down the park and maybe the 4th of July. And you wouldn't know until you showed up that the park was closed and you can't get in. At least now with the reservation system, you don't take the time to go to the park and then find out, oh, I can't get in. That, that to me, 
is the plus of the reservation system. And if I see that it's yellow, I don't want to go to that park anyway. So I'm, I'm glad with the reservation system because that just tells me, well, the park is so busy. I'm not going to have a good time in that park anyway. So anyway, but yeah, the, uh, <laughs> I know it is expensive. And Eric, thank you so much. Please subscribe and join us. I don't know uh, when the regular live schedule will be. We'll figure it out over the next couple of weeks. But thank you so much for joining in. You have a good rest of your day. Um, and yeah, when you get to Florida, we can all go. Absolutely. So um, need to go for Christmas decorations. That you, oh, yeah. And Disney and Universal both have great ones. Now, I will say this. And uh, I see that we've been going an hour. Wow, an hour and 10 minutes. This is so much fun. Um, Magic Kingdom, I think, has the worst decorations. <laughs> They're basically just on Main Street. And then once you leave Main Street, there's really nothing. Uh, Epcot, I think, has beautiful decorations there throughout. My favorite, though, were Animal Kingdom. They have so many cool decorations all over that are like in the style of the various areas. I really love walk, And a lot of them in Animal Kingdom you you would probably miss as you're walking by and then you come back again you're like oh that i didn't see that that's really cool so i think animal kingdom actually had some of the best but magic kingdom to me was actually disappointing because it was literally just main street and once you left main street you wouldn't even know it was christmas so that that that, that part was kind of disappointing but it is nice um sea world has amazing roller coasters you are absolutely right andy uh mako it's fan that's just a good old school coaster takes you way 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 up the lift and then just drops you it reminds me of the american screen machine at uh six flags over georgia that's what it reminds me of just a long fast coaster i really like kraken that's my favorite in the sea world here in orlando i have not been on the icebreaker yet uh but i and i also like uh, uh manta it's just kind of fun you just put your arms out you put your arms out and just just fly it's really a lot of fun a lot of fun so yeah we're very lucky to live here. I mean, uh, we are. It, it, it's actually why I took the job that brought me here, primarily for the cruise line, because, you know, we've got Tampa, we've got Fort Lauderdale, we've got Miami, we've got Port Canaveral, so we've got four ports right here. But then also, we are we are both big kids, and we were very excited about the opportunity to actually be able to go ahead and get annual passes. So we have the sorcerer level of, uh, of the passes. So that means we can go, there's there's basically three weeks of the year, two and a half weeks that we can't go. We can't go the week of uh, Christmas and New Year's, and we can't go Thanksgiving, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and that's it. Otherwise, we can go to the parks pretty much anytime we want. And we, like I said, we have not had a problem with the reservations. We've been able to get in anytime we want, but we don't go during Christmas and New Year's. We'll go there to see the decoration, but we'll go during the week and early in the season. We're not going to go late in the season. Festival of the Holidays is really fun. If you're coming down over at Epcot, I thought that was absolutely lovely. Food and wine is the best one, but I really enjoyed the Festival of the Holidays as well. They have a cookie crawl. Yummo, a cookie crawl. And if you're going to do the cookie crawl, big tip, bring Tupperware so you can take the cookies home with you. That's what we did. We uh, we did two cookie crawls, one for her, one for me. So we had two of every cookie. We brought them home. We threw them in the freezer, and we were eating them for like a month. <laughs> They're so good. So, um, so this is awesome. This is really, really awesome. So I'm having fun over here. So we are definitely going to start doing regular uh, regular uh, stuff over here. I'm going to throw this up there. Make sure you join our Facebook group. If you have not joined our Facebook group already, it is a private group. I have to let you in over there. Come on over and join us. And you can also follow us on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. Where's Walter TV? So that was our first live stream over here on YouTube. I hope you all had a good time. I had a good time. Did you have a good time, Rebecca? Oh, she's just smiling. She gave me a smile. Mm. So I don't know. I don't know if she had a good time or not. I think she had a good time. I had a good time. I hope you all had a good time. This was a lot of fun. It's nice to see so many of you over here. Thank you for the compliments uh, coming over here. So we'll still be doing some TikToks. Uh, we will definitely do a TikTok. I think what we're going to do is one TikTok live and one YouTube live every single week. Just because, you know, keep it on both channels. Uh, folks over there at TikTok have been real good to me. We've got almost 8,000 followers over there on TikTok. Uh, we're closing in on 1,000 followers here. So I'm very excited for that. So with that, folks, that's going to be the end of our first one. Uh, yes, Andy, great. And uh, Tam, you have a great night. Arizona Cruiser, you have a great night. Eric, you have a great night. Thank you all for joining us. This was a hoot. This really was a hoot. And uh, just stay tuned. Keep an eye out uh, on our channel. You'll see the announcement for when we're going to have the next live stream. Uh, oh, Mark. Mark. Well, yeah, I, I at least have to say hello, Mark. Uh, Mark, I'm glad everything went really well. 
for you uh, a couple days ago. Uh, and yes for Tuesday. So just so you know, yes for Tuesday, we are on. So I'm looking forward to seeing you and your wife again. And for everybody else who joined in, um, thank you so much for joining on and uh, hanging out with us tonight. I really enjoyed doing this. So you guys have a good rest of your weekend. And if you've got any other questions, drop them into the comments of my videos. I will see them and we will do the best to answer them. And of course, join us over on TikTok pretty much daily over there for your questions. So everybody, have a great Saturday night. See you all real soon.